Hi all, welcome to Lab 10. This week we'll be discussing human population. This figure shows world population growth through history. It's obvious that we've had a large spike in population in the modern era. What is contributing to human population growth? Major population jumps occurred with the advent of tools, agriculture, and industry. What determines population growth? Population growth is determined by birth rate, death rate, emigration, or people leaving an area, and immigration, or people coming into an area. I want you guys to think about this riddle. Let's say two women back in 1800 each have two kids. Their kids have two kids, and so on. One woman leaves many more descendants than the other. Assuming similar death rates, how is this possible? This is possible due to reproductive timing. If one of the women is having her two children when she is 15 and 17 years old, she will be able to have many more offspring in her family than a woman who waits until she is 30 to have her two children, and her two children wait until they are 30 to have their two children. Analyze these graphs. One graph shows world population growth, and one shows world population growth rate. How are these different from each other? Which graph is which? We can see that the graph on the left shows world population growth rate. So the rate of growth is actually going to be declining. However, the world population is still growing. This is because we have so many people on the planet. This figure shows the age structure in Ramsey County, or the county that St. Paul is located in. I want you guys to try to observe some trends. In contrast with the figure that we just saw showing age structure in Ramsey County, this figure is showing age structure of the population in Afghanistan. Here you can see that there are many more young people than old people. This can be caused by high birth rates and high mortality rates. This is representative of the demographics present in a developing country. This figure is a depiction of the demographic changes that occurred in Japan as it developed. Initially, it had the typical pyramidal shape. Then, as institutional changes decreased the death rate, more older people were able to live longer. Now, as Japan has become a very industrialized and developed nation, there are fewer young people than old people meaning that the population is declining. This figure illustrates a comparison between exponential and logistic growth curves. Here we can see how birth rate and death rate relate to population growth. As a country develops, they will move from stage one to stage four. In stage one, or the high stationary phase, we have both a high birth and a high death rate. As the population begins to expand, death rate begins to drop and birth rate remains steady. In stage three, birth rate begins to drop as well. In stage four, or the low stationary phase, we see that birth rate and death rate are both low. This is representative of a developed country and we see that population growth begins to level off. The United States went through a demographic change similar to that of Japan over the course of the last century, but our end distribution is more column-like, indicating that we have equal old and young people approximately. This is caused by moderate birth rates, immigration, and high life expectancies. After analyzing our growing human population, it is important to analyze the impacts that this population can have on our world. Can resources be exhausted? This particular figure shows the North Atlantic cod population. We have overfished the population to such an extent that the population is in severe danger of becoming extinct. This photo series shows water depletion in Lake Chad, which is located in Africa. Water resources are being depleted as tributaries are cut off from bodies of water and diverted for irrigation. Similarly, water depletion can be seen in the RLC. This also happens in the United States. 
the water rights to the Colorado River are misallocated. The river should flow into the Gulf of California near Baja, California, but because of the extreme water demands in Nevada, Arizona, and California, especially for agriculture, the water now only trickles into Mexico, where there is not enough for use and does not make it all the way to the Gulf anymore. There are more than 20 dams on the Colorado River now. Even in Minnesota, aquifers are overextended. We can see that we're using an unsustainable amount of water. This figure illustrates estimated human population growth. We can see in the past we have an estimated population, which is depicted in black. In blue, we can see the actual population for the last several decades. Finally, we see the predicted population out into the future. The red is the United Nations high prediction, the yellow is the medium prediction, and the green represents the lowest possible prediction. As a wrap up for this lecture, we're going to go in a more positive direction, and that is that humans can make a change. Our first example is the depletion of the ozone layer. Declining ozone layers were first noticed in the 1980s. International action banned the use of CFCs, which are used in aerosols like hairsprays. After that change, ozone layer levels remained constant worldwide for the past nine years. They are no longer declining and holes over most of the world, except for Antarctica, are closing. It is projected that ozone can be back to 1980s pre-decline level between 2030 and 2070. Acid rain is caused by nitrogen and sulfate emissions. The Acid Rain Reduction Program established under the 1990 Clean Air Act amendments was enacted to reduce emissions. In the top left, you can see how much nitrogen and sulfate amounts have decreased over the past 20-some years, and emission rates are far down, which can be seen in the bottom right corner. Finally, the birds are back. The reduction of bird songs and birds of prey was brought to national attention by Rachel Carson in her book, Silent Spring. Eliminating the use of a pesticide called DDT has brought back eagles to the upper Mississippi River. So, on a positive note, although human population continues to grow, we can limit the impacts that this has on our world. Humans can make a difference.